Hello and welcome to the Rogers TV COVID-19 show. I'm Carol Merton and before I welcome our guest to the program today, I want to share a few thoughts with you. For those of you who watch the program regularly, you know that we try and keep you updated on the COVID-19 situation in Grey Bruce, but it certainly is changing rapidly and the landscape as we discuss it today may be changed by tomorrow. The Grey Bruce Health Unit is declaring a critical threshold of COVID-19 cases in Grey Bruce. As a result of the increasing case numbers, the public health unit contact tracing and case management capacity is being stretched to its limit. If we as the community do not implement drastic measures at this juncture, the pandemic will spiral out of control. The Grey Bruce Health Unit is asking the public to help. Everyone across Grey Bruce needs to consider themselves a carrier for the next 48 hours until we reach all case and their contacts. It is a priority that everyone stay at home except for essential travel. If contacted by public health, be prudent in following any direction they give to you. This is in addition to the provincial stay at home order. A class action order from the Medical Officer of Health will be issued to further reinforce the need for cases and close contacts to follow public health direction. Individuals who are symptomatic are asked to attend assessment clinics. The Gravers Health Unit is asking the public to continue to practice the three W's. Wash your hands, watch your distance, wear a mask, and please, Stay at home. The sacrifices that we make, make each and every day will help to prevent the spread of COVID-19. All of us together can make a difference. We can save lives. I want to thank you in the community for doing all that you can to control the spread of COVID-19. And on that note, I also want to say thank you to my guests for joining me today to give us some hopefully good news about what we can look forward to. So Jim McManaman is here to talk about the Open Sound Minor Soccer Association and plans that they have to be able to get the children and youth of our community playing soccer and enjoying the outdoors in spite of COVID-19. Thank you, Jim, for joining the program. It's so nice to see you. Hi, Carol. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. No problem. No problem. So you've got lots of information to share. First of all, tell us a little bit about the Owen Sound Minor so uh, Soccer Association. And I understand there's a board as well that, that oversees the operation. So maybe you can Give us a, a viewpoint of how you operate first before we get into the programs. Sure, no, no problem. So we're a, a, a youth sport organization organized for kids uh, born uh, uh, between four years old and, and 18 years old. Uh, we, we offer in-town house league soccer programming uh, for they're all, uh, all those kids are divided up by age division. 
Uh, and then we also offer traveling teams, rep teams, as you would call them, uh, that go around the uh, different parts of the uh, of the province. So we're uh, uh, many people will be familiar with this, all the minor sports that are out there, and I'll do a lot of hard work and a lot of great work. Uh, we're very similar. We're a volunteer board. Um, we uh, we meet virtually now uh, monthly, and then right around this time is when things really ramp up. As you can imagine, there's lots to get done as far as uh, um, you know, getting fields ready, getting uniforms, getting team lists, uh, registering people. Um, and, and that might seem odd to be talking about that today in, in view of what's been going on with COVID. But I think the main thing to keep in mind is, uh, is that for whatever sport we're talking about, there's a lot of lead time that's required. You can't just say, um, you know, the stay at home order ends middle of May and you're going to start the week after it's a, there's a lot of lead time. So, so that's why we've, decided to push ahead with our programming for this uh, for this summer we uh, we like every I think every sport uh, we were canceled last year we did not offer a program um, so we're very keen to to move forward with a program as you said for for kids I think it's important especially in these times that uh, since we are an outdoor sport we do have uh, you know I guess a bit of an advantage there and uh, we just think it's very important to get the kids outside active, um, and in as safe as manner as possible, which uh, which is what I'm here today to talk about. So you mentioned that you have teams that would travel throughout the province. So how far would the teams actually end up traveling in Ontario? Well, the vast majority of our teams, and you know, ninety percent of our teams are in town. They play. Uh, we all all our games are at the Kiwanis Soccer Complex. Many people know where that is. Uh, all our games are there. Uh, we have, uh, I think there's five rep teams that will travel. Our region is the Kitchener, Guelph, Cambridge, uh, sort of yeah. southwestern Ontario. That's our region. So so when I uh, when I do get into I have our, our return to play plan. When I do get into yeah. that, there's sort of two facets to it. One is for the in-town program and one is for the traveling. It's, uh, they're, yeah. as you can imagine, they're treated uh, differently just because the risk is different. Yeah. So... You've been given clearance to be able to do that. So tell us about that clearance. Who who did sure. you have to approach and, and what did you have to do to demonstrate that you could run a program safely? Sure. So uh, as uh, we're under the Ontario Soccer, we're under our, our governing bodies, Ontario Soccer Association. Um, before we could return to play, you needed a return to play plan. Um, and, and just describing... <laughs> How are you going to deal with COVID? What are what are your measures you're putting in place uh, above and beyond your normal programming? What are you going to do that will make it safe for children? Uh, and and when you think about it, you know a lot of work went into our plan and a lot of efforts uh, and and a lot of, a lot of efforts will go into it. Uh, but I mean the main the bottom bottom line is we want children and families to feel safe and if they can have some confidence that it's being taken seriously that there are measures in place that should give them a level of confidence. We hope. To, to register their children. So uh, so we had to, we uh, came up with a plan. It had to be assessed by Canada Soccer, which is the nation governing body. And then it was also submitted to our health unit uh, for comment. Uh, obviously everybody's local conditions are different. So uh, our, our, and I, I should stress, it's not, uh, they don't approve it. They they give us suggestions on how to do it better. How, how would you do this or how should you do that? Uh, and I can go through some of those as, as we get into the, yeah. the meat and potatoes of the plan. So yeah, I'm into the meat and potatoes now. You've captured my interest. All right, well, Take good. So, so so the main the main part about it is, as I said, the pro protocols and and how do you how are you going to deal with uh, with with um, COVID? So the so the very first thing is we have to be people are sort of familiar with the terms uh, what zone we're in, whether a red zone, a gray zone, uh, orange, green, or yellow. Um, so first of all. The current order that's in place, we obviously can't play soccer right now. Uh, not that the weather would allow us to anyway, but even if we could, we, we, we aren't allowed to. Once uh, we're anticipating um, returning to, you know, the yellow or green zones sometime in the future, you know, we're hoping that that happens in May. Uh, our plan right now is to uh, offer programming starting June 1st, uh, that week of June 1st. Again, that is, that's our goal. That's our, that's our target it's flexible. You know, if we have to move it a week or two, then we move it a week or two. You know, it's a, like everything now, people are understanding there's moving targets with everything and, and our, ours is included. So our registration open three weeks, um, is open for three weeks in April. Our registration deadline is April 23rd. And I'll explain to that why it's slightly different than we've done in other years. 
Um, so the first thing we have is we have to be in the right zone, color zone that allows for physical contact for people to be out and about. Um, one of the main changes people will see is that we have a contact tracing, we're calling them COVID manager. Each will require more volunteers. Each team has a coach. Each team will have an assistant coach that helps deal with uh, uh, COVID issues. And then each team has a COVID reception manager, it's called. And basically, it's uh, it's a little, anybody who's involved with minor hockey, when you enter the arena, you know, there's one door in and there's a different door out. And it was very easy, uh, somewhat easy to keep track of it. A soccer field, slightly different uh, setup because you can walk, you know, the whole field's open. So we're trying to set up entrances and exits at every field. And at the entrances, we will have COVID reception managers that logs absolutely everybody that comes to that field, um, whether it be at a player, parent, referee, um, everybody will will be logged on. So then that that way, if there is an issue, we have we have backup with all our contact tracing. We ask at those times, we'll you know you'll mark down that that uh, Johnny's attending and Johnny's mother is here with them, or maybe it's Johnny's grandparent, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and, and then we have a health check that we ask. And the questions that everybody's very are very uh, used to now, like when you go into a business, those types of questions will be asked. Assuming you pass it, then you're allowed to go into the field and uh, and and play. As as far as the game themselves, people really won't notice much difference. Uh, they do allow children to play um, play soccer, just like you would think they would play. They they've deemed that risk very low um, for any transmission, and and they're allowing that. Anybody watching, however, has to be socially distanced. We encourage mask wearing. Uh, there will be hand sanitizing hand sanitizing stations at every uh, every entrance and exit. Um, our washrooms out there have to be, uh, you know, obviously cleaned quite frequently. Uh, our uh, our spectator stands will be closed, so we encourage people will bring just lawn chairs. Which at soccer, that's generally what they do anyway. But just so we're perfectly clear, um, our change rooms will be closed. Um, right. So so those are sort of some of the the, the things we talk about. Um, we are limiting the number of people you can bring with you. The the participant can bring with them. Um, Anybody who's been involved with the, especially the younger ages, it tends to be mom, the child comes, and then mom and dad is there, then grandma and grandpa on both sides are there, maybe some siblings, and next thing you know, you have about eight people for, for one child. So we're limiting it to two people per participant. So so it could be mom and dad, it could be grandma and grandpa, it can be, can be whoever, as long as it's two. Um, really aren't encouraging spectators, but we do allow two people to come with the participant. So... Um, the other big change, I guess I would say, is the health unit is limiting us to bubbles of 50 players. So uh, in the past, we just took as many people as signed up in a given age division and made the team, uh, just like every sport. This time, we're allowed, we're maxed out at 50. So, so I guess my main message to people would be, if you are interested in playing, you need to register before April 23rd, because after April 23rd, there might not be any room for you, because we might fill you know, at the 10 year old level and just picking an age there, uh, we allow 50 players. Um, once we get to number 51, that child will be on a waiting list uh, because the health unit has deemed that a cohort of 50 is an acceptable number. Those kids will play each other in that 50 player group. Uh, we'll divide them into four teams probably. Um, and then, uh, um, and, and that's, that's how it would work. If we get Possibly in some of the small, younger age divisions, we might get two cohorts of 50, and that's fine. We can have two different divisions. Uh, those divisions would never play each other. Um, uh, again, you have to stay within your 50 player cohort. So um, that's probably, we have uh, throughout the plan, we've got, oh, we stagger our start times. That's another measure. As anybody who's been there knows that when one game ends and the other one's about to start, you have this huge crush of people all at the same time. Um, so we're staggering our start times to allow. The first group to finish and, and get out of there, quite honestly, <laughs> before the new group uh, shows up. So that's that's another one. Uh, I think I mentioned we sanitize daily everything. Uh, and there and there's and and in this plan. And by the way, you can go to ownstownminersoccer.ca uh, and look up our plan. But uh, there's guidelines for players, for parents, for uh, referees, for coaches. Um, um, it's it's quite detailed. Uh, and and then also. Our emergency action plan. So, what happens if 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 something bad happens? What happens if somebody does get symptoms? And and it's it's uh, basically we have a uh, a flow chart that tells us so where do we go if somebody 
calls and said, hey, I was at a game last night and now I've got a fever or now I've gone to the hospital and they think I've got COVID. Um, what do we do then? So yeah. essentially we shut down that particular team. We shut down the team they played. We let the people know that there's been an exposure. Uh, we follow the, the advice of the health unit at that point. We turn it over to the health authorities and follow their advice. But for the immediate future, that group would then be shut down, not allowed to play, uh, similar to what's going on with the NHL until such time as they as they clear. So I know I've thrown a lot of information at you there, but that was sort of the big uh, no, overview. It's good. I, I didn't. Have... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so just a couple of questions with that part, because I'm sure you have additional information you'd I like do. to share. I do, yes. So I pulled off some information about that you had, and I, I was interested to note that if I got this right, and if I'm understanding your bubbles, there's sort of 14 different categories of ages that are mixed, uh, if I've counted it quickly, correctly. So when you talk about 50 bubble, 50 in a bubble, you could actually end up with 14 bubbles. Correct. Oh, more. no, absolutely. Absolutely. We anticipate we will. I haven't counted if it's 14, but if we, well, we start at uh, under four uh, yeah. and we go all the way to under 18, so it's, uh, yeah, you're probably pretty close. <laughs> yes, that's probably right. Yeah. Um, so it would be a minimum of those bubbles. Um, now, the referees, do they actually um, coach, or the coaches, I should call them, um, do they coach a mixture of ages then? Uh, they would, generally speaking, one coach and one assistant manager per team, um, okay. and they would generally just do one age group. Uh, okay. You know, they might coach their under five, uh, their five year old daughter. and that would be the only age they they coach. They, the 50 players, by the way, that bubble is only for the players. Um, you can, on top of that, are the are the parents that I had mentioned that might show up, yes. the game officials, the the uh, the coaches. They're they're above and beyond that that cohort. Right, but that's just uh, you can register 50 players within Correct. a certain. Correct. Yeah. And yep. some of them are mixed as well. Under under 10 mixed, you've got and and well, that's. Boys and girls. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, having um, certainly a coach and, and an assistant, heaven forbid, if there was a, a time where they had to just either quarantine just in case, it, it then allows for others to continue to play because you have the coaches assigned to different teams. So that's, that's a exactly. that's yep, a bonus. Exactly right. Yep. And on top of that, anybody who's been to the soccer complex, one of the benefits we have with that with that facility is uh, we have seven fields, seven full-size fields, some of them are divided into smaller fields, but um, they're spread out quite a bit. So the health unit's advice was, uh, uh, you know, if the fields have been side by side by side by side, that would have been a tricky situation because you need, I mean, the best thing for COVID is distance, right? Not to be, yeah. not to be near people. Yeah. We say that, that two meter thing, but at the soccer complex, you know, so one cohort of 50 is playing, on you know I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how far away but quite a distance away is a different cohort of 50 and those two never really come don't do not come in contact with each other don't even come close to coming in contact with each other so that's why they're allowing it uh, um, as you'd mentioned we could you know uh, we don't know how many will register but they're, they're you know we're, we're hopefully certainly talking hundreds of children for sure yeah so really the first me important message um, besides the fact that there's quite a quite a plan towards safety is to get registered because the numbers are limited. That's and exactly, that's, that's a big change too for soccer people. I don't know, I, I can't speak to other sports, but for soccer, people like to sign up, um, some people like to sign up quite last minute. You know, our, our season starts, as I mentioned, our season, it's Monday, May 31st that we're planning on our start. We would have people registering generally in years past, right up to the weekend before and we'll take them because, of course, we want everybody to play. We want them involved. Sure. Um, but but this year, that's the big message. April 23rd is our is our deadline right now. Yeah. You do not want to be the 51st person registered in your age group because there might not be a spot for you. Um, yeah. we, we don't know. We, we would put that person on a waiting list. And if we were lucky enough to get another 50 players or, you know, yeah. 45 players or something like yeah. that registered, we could make a new bubble. But no guarantees once you get past 50. Soccer is certainly a growing sport and, and it's a very popular sport for both boys and girls. Um, 
So what are you noticing? You've been involved in, in this organization for a while, right, Jim? For sure. So what are you hearing from the parents and even from the kids as a result of not being able to offer soccer last year? For sure. we, we uh, To be honest with you, I wasn't sure whether rolling this out right now was the best plan. Um, you know, should we have wait? Should we wait until ever the green lights uh, come from the health unit and the and the Terra government and and let's open it up then? But I, uh, you know, and I was convinced by our board discussed it, and I actually now agree with them that perhaps this is the ideal time to to send this out to people. And we are getting a lot of positive feedback from people who are, you know, they're they're anxious. They're you know you know you you deal with this. Uh, with your show all the time, people are anxious, people are worried. They want some positive news. Um, they want their children out. Uh, soccer, and I, and I don't mean, I, of course, I'm here promoting soccer, but there's lots of great sports out there that, that are active for your children. Um, we want, you want them out there. You want them running and being active and making friendships and, and uh, making memories, you know, and, and soccer is a great sport to keep you physically active, uh, which is a big, big thing, obviously. Um, but we are getting a lot of parents that have, I, I think I'd say, pent up demand, if that's the right word, that they, they are anxious to get back at this and they want yeah. to get their children out there. So so this ideally, we're hoping this this plan, the, doing shows like yours right now, it gets people excited about, you know, what's going to come. Because yeah. we all know, um, we, we all need positive news, especially in the last little while here. Uh, and, uh, you know, the thing, better things are coming. And um, we're hoping that this 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 is one small piece of that puzzle for people that they can have their kids out. I have three children that all played soccer. Last summer was a very unusual time for for our family. We're usually going from one field to the other, and you know, uh, four or five days a week, and uh, it was a very strange time. So, um, Carol, the one thing I didn't touch on, and I know we're running running short on time here in a minute, um, was that you had asked about the out of town teams. Um, yeah. So we do have uh, traveling teams. Again, that is much, what I've discussed now has been our house league in town. The out of town, the traveling teams is a much different kettle of fish because we would be traveling to places like Guelph, Cambridge, uh, uh, you know, Waterloo, Kitchener, that's our range, uh, Stratford. Um, and so first of all, we, we are, won't be allowed to travel until all of those groups are in the yellow or green or orange zone. So of course, if they're locked down, they can't come here. We can't go there. That's uh, that's understood. The plan currently, right now, and again, it can change, is that we would form once again 50 player bubbles with another community. So perhaps, and uh, I'm just be giving examples. Perhaps Guelph, Old Sound, and Stratford um, yeah. would form a bubble, and our rep teams would play each other home and away. Um, and, you know, we'd go to Guelph. They'd come here. Uh, uh, we'd play each other. And then the thought process is we would take a two week break, an isolation break, and then we'd form a new bubble. Um, so then we might play, uh, you know, Fergus and Cambridge and Owen Sound might form a new bubble. And again, mm -hmm. we play them all home and away, 14 day isolation break. Um, so, and then do it again. So that that's the current plan. That's the current thought that we would do, as I said, it, we're going to be fairly flexible there because we're dealing with other communities and we'll just have to see how that goes. Um, we're not, you know, that's, that's a little bit more up in the air, but we're certainly moving ahead with the plan as it stands. The main message out of all of this is our plan is flexible. We are hoping for June 1st start date. If that, you know, if things go well, perfectly. If we have to push it back a little bit, then we'll push it back a little bit. It's not um, the plan. The plan can move, I guess I'd say. So... One of the things, Jim, in this community is that there are a lot of people who financially are finding things very, very difficult um, for a variety of reasons. COVID's had a huge financial impact on businesses and people in their livelihoods. What opportunities might there be for people who are financially strapped but desperately want their children to play? For sure, and I'm really glad you raised that because one of the key questions is, all, on top of that is, well, Jim, you've given this great plan or great, great talk, but what if it doesn't work? What if it's not going to happen? Well, if somebody has registered and we don't offer a program, we offer full refunds right off the top. So just so people put their put their mind at rest that we, we do uh, 
that is part of our plan. For sure, every every year we get a number of people that are financially um, that want to participate but aren't financially in in a good place. Uh, we we take those on our board uh, reviews those on a case by case basis. Uh, there mm -hmm. there is funding through um, oh through Gray County and I've forgot the early childhood program and I've forgotten the name. I apologize, but uh, if anybody wants to contact us and discuss that, there is funding there. We also uh, offer, um, we want to work with people. So, you know, if somebody comes to us and can't afford it now or can't afford it all, we will discuss that and work with them. And we've done that numerous times and we continue to do it. In fact, I just got a grant request from a local service club that somebody had reached out to them asking for money, uh, the local Kiwanis Club. Um, and, um, you know, and they're going to work with that family to, yeah. to try and get them through. So that's a great point. If anyone out there would like to play but think finances is a problem, please reach out to us. We confidentially can deal with people on a on a one to one basis. Um, we've done it many times before, and we're more than willing to do it again. Uh, I should have mentioned we have our membership. We're, we're not sure this year how many kids we deal with. We are the largest minor sport in uh, in Old Sound and Great Bruce, really. Um, we well, before 2019, we had about 800 children. Um, uh, we've been up to all the way up to 1,400 children, which wow. is by far the biggest sport in town. That surprises some people sometimes. They don't they don't realize that. But um, soccer is the biggest sport in Old Sound. We're certain. I don't know if our numbers will approach 800, seven or 800 this year. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how we come out of this. But um, mm -hmm. certainly, we're anticipating this program of being uh, you know hundreds of children for sure. So the community, how can it support? So for example, um, could people make donations if they want to support the organization and, or support a child to play or a family? Sure, no, that, that we, every now and again, we do get that where somebody says, I wanna support, you know, uh, here's a check for $100 or $200 or whatever it might be. Um, and that's a good point. Our, our fees range from at the youngest age to $70 to uh, the oldest ages up to 140. So that's sort of the range we're talking about. That's one of the benefits of soccer too. We're one of the least expensive uh, sports out there. Um, but uh, eh, eh, realizing that, that even that's a challenge um, yeah. for sure, can be for some people. But if people want to donate money to that, by all means, reach out to us. Again, our, our, our website is ownsoundminersoccer.ca. Um, we are looking for sponsors too. And we're realizing that can be a bit of a tough one. Nobody's been hard, hit harder than businesses in, in this yeah. area. Um, we are reaching out to some to our sponsors to ask them to sponsor a team. Um, so if somebody's interested, you own a business and you'd like to help out, that's a great way to do it too. Uh, I believe it's three hundred dollars, three hundred twenty-five dollars, and you can sponsor an entire team. You get your name on the uh, on the jersey, um, your business name. So um, one point I should mention, Carol, before I forget or I have forgotten it, um, we have an under four program that is for children born in twenty seventeen. And it's a message we need to get out there. We get all the time. We're getting phone calls from people with two-year-olds or even one-year-olds, um, three-year-olds. Uh, you, you have to be, our program runs for children born in 2003 to 2017. That's the age yeah. groups we're talking Excellent. about. So um, just wanted to get that out because we get, yeah. wouldn't believe how many phone calls we get from disgruntled two-year-old parents. Jim, I can't believe how quickly this time has gone by. I have really appreciated you being on the program, and I think it's great. Your plan, you've thought of uh, how to approach this to offer a positive to the youth in our community. I wish you all the best, and please come back and let us know how it goes. I that will, Carol. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity to get this positive message out, in especially Absolutely. times like this. Thank you. You take care. And you thank too, Carol. you to our viewing audience for watching the program. Please take care, stay safe, and care for each other. Thank you.